I guess honesty and knowing yourself and enacting that self. <laughs> I would want to say like honest, truthful. Well, as an English literature major, you'd think I'd know. <laughs> I think for me it stands up kind of as like a mix of being accountable and being authentic. I think in some ways integrity means passion. I think it's dedication towards a cause that you feel really strongly for. <sighs> uh, can I Google? Welcome to Intuition, where we take a look at behind the scenes of academia. My name is Lila. And I'm Flynn. And today we're asking, academic integrity, what is it good for? Academic integrity. It's the word that you see in just about every syllabus you get. It's the word that you get thrown in your face if you ever get accused of cheating. But what does it really mean? There isn't a lot of background into what it means, and a lot of us just kind of see it every day. It becomes an innocuous part of our lives, and we stop questioning it. It's almost like a word that if you say it enough times starts to sound silly. But I think that's part of the problem is that very few students critically evaluate what it means to be academically honest. So what prompted this episode was that I've been doing a lot of work on our academic integrity page here at the Chapman Learning Commons because we got a few comments about how it could really be touched up. And so I, I did a lot of looking into what UBC has extraneous from our resources with academic integrity and what other academic integrity resources look like outside of UBC. So I looked at the pages for SFU, MIT, Western in Ontario, and a bunch of other different places. And what I started to realize is that there are a lot of different pages about academic integrity that are very barren. They don't have a lot of good information. In some cases, there isn't any in a lot of schools. And at UBC, it's a little bit barren, aside from our page, which is actually student curated. And one of the other things that I noticed that I thought was really important is that a lot of these pages weren't so focused on the ethics behind academic integrity, which is in itself an ethical framework, but rather the utility of academic integrity. And I don't mean the positive utility, I mean the negative utility. And so just to further explain that, a lot of these pages are focused on the consequences of behaving academically dishonestly. They're focused on things like you may fail a class, you may get a zero on your paper, or you may get kicked out of school, rather than, well, no, this is something that you should do because it's an ethical good. And I find that a little bit unsettling. Because if you ask a lot of students why they behave with integrity, they'll say things like, I need to submit my papers so that I don't get a bad grade. And if that's the way that we're approaching integrity, what is integrity even good for? Like, what does it mean? If it's just an ethical framework and the ethical framework is only observed for utility purposes, then why does it matter? And I think one thing that I've been very impressed like by your research in this thing, uh, Flynn, is that I think it's really important to point out that there's stuff like that, as you say, like positive motivations for why people should uphold like, academic integrity. Because I'll be honest too, when I when I think of academic integrity, like for the past four years of my university career, the first thing that always comes to mind will be, oh yeah, like don't cheat, you know, don't sort of like leave any loopholes in a way that examiners can accuse you of not being academically honest. So I've never really thought about having this idea that why I should do it. And I think I'm kind of really looking forward to talk to the people on the streets and see what they think of academic integrity and what we can sort of like dig in with like further research into this topic. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's going to be interesting about this episode is just trying to get a gauge on how students on campus feel about the word integrity in and of itself. And so what we're going to do with this episode is something a little bit different. Instead of going out and getting a guest for a long form conversation, what we're going to do is use Streeter interviews, which we've aggregated before coming in to record the, the bulk of this podcast and respond to them. And the way that we've organized our questions is so that we asked people first what they thought of the word integrity, regardless of the word academic, because we wanted to be able to differentiate between the boilerplate statements that you get when you ask people about the term academic integrity. We wanted to get a gauge of what they thought of the word extraneous from the discussions of citing your sources, because we wanted to see how their answers change when we then asked them what happened when, we, when they added the word academic to the term academic integrity. And it was really interesting because we got a lot of very different responses. So the first question we asked the interviewees was, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of integrity? And this is the combination of all the responses that we had throughout our time out on the street. 
Integrity, I think, for me means being honest um, and truthful to yourself and, and to others, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think integrity means... Oh, as an English literature major, you'd think I'd know. <laughs> um, I think in some ways integrity means passion. Um, I think it's dedication towards a cause that you feel really strongly for. And if you do think that it is something worth working towards or collaborating with other people, then it's something that you can really drive yourself to really be passionate about. Okay. And how do you apply that to your own life? Um, I think with my own life, I try to surround myself with people who inspire me and who really drive me to pursue things that might be outside of my comfort zone, but are willing to accept that I might have my own boundaries that need to be respected and so with that I think that there's a lot of integrity that comes with respecting others as well as encouraging others to step outside of their comfort zone. I think for me it stands up kind of as like a mix of being accountable and being authentic. Okay. Um, it means being true to yourself and also being accountable for what you do. Okay. I think it's like a mix of those two. Awesome. So yeah. how do you see that playing out in your life? And it doesn't have to be you doing it, you know, mm -hmm. maybe other people. I think I look up to people who are into, into how, what's the... Yeah, yeah into, it's weird because you can't use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who yeah. have integrity. Yeah. I feel like I look up to them because I aspire to be accountable and be authentic. And I feel like at times authenticity is hard because then you want to be yourself, but it's like... You have to meet the needs. You have to meet the, the yeah, needs. And then yeah. it's like kind of feeling like figure out the balance of both, I feel like, is something I look up to. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's like living according to the values that you that you know you have. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And how do you see that playing out in your life? It doesn't have to be your own self, just, you know, other yeah. people as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I, I volunteer a lot. I've gone to school based on what I hope to be my, my integrity and, yeah. and my values. And yeah, I try to make it a part of my daily, every day, awesome. I guess. I guess honesty mm -hmm. um, and knowing yourself and enacting that self in, in practice, I guess. Yeah. So how would you say that works in practice? <laughs> I'm trying to think of my own life. Uh, mm -hmm. I think... In practice, that looks like um, not sacrificing your values for other people's needs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's that sounds terrible. I mean, I no, guess no, you would. I guess you would change uh, or like adjust yourself to certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for me, like knowing myself and knowing my values, and not um, not budging on those in certain situations. Mm, sorry, I don't actually know that word. Okay. So that was collectively the responses that we had to the first part when we asked our interviewees, what is the first thing that comes to their mind when they think of the word integrity? And I can definitely see that there are some adjectives that are being brought out, such as passion, living up to your, va well, living up to your values isn't really an adjective, but, you know, having like valuable actions. And I kind of noticed that there was this sort of like pattern that a lot of, of our interviews mentioned, whereby integrity isn't so much about what you do with yourself to other people or to like external activities, but also how they sort of like connect with themselves. So I think one of our colleagues at the CSINC said that while it is important for her to act with integrity when she's interacting with people, when she's doing something, she also mentioned that it's important for her to uphold that integrity when she's maybe um, evaluating her values and her life. Yeah, I think what I really gathered is that a lot of people approach integrity as if it's internally motivated. There's very little focus on what's going on outside. It's more so on what you're doing, and it's very goal-oriented. A lot of people talked about how they see integrity in the things that they do and the goals that they are going towards. So we had that one person talk about how she only studied things which she thought gave her integrity because they were things that, were, that she was motivated by. We had another person talk about how integrity was passion. Integrity was approaching the work that you do and the things that you care about with energy and with vigor. And I think that's really interesting because instead of approaching integrity as ethical, let's say, yeah. they approach it more as motivational. 
And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's very mm-hmm. interesting. But it's kind of interesting to see, as we will later, how that maps on to how they answer the question, what is academic integrity? Yeah. Because oftentimes when I was looking up academic integrity in my research, it was posited more as this framework of ethics. It was a we do this because of external motivations mm-hmm. and external factors because we respect the people that we work with. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's incongruent with the responses we got earlier because we had that one interviewee say that she approached integrity as if it was a form of respecting others work on top of her own Mm -hmm. it was her personal passion but also respecting others passions and i think that's quite an interesting way to approach it because a lot of these are very abstract answers Mm -hmm. yeah and i think there isn't sort of i didn't get any vibe from the people that we were talking to when they mentioned what is integrity was like i'm saying this because this is how it is i think that there was some sort of like flexibility and also fluidity towards what the definition of integrity is and i kind of noticed that you know when even when some of our interviews was mentioning out an idea in the initial seconds that we were talking to them and asking them about integrity, they also tend to change that idea towards the end of our conversation with them. Right? So even though it was like a five minute conversation when we were talking to them, some of them do see, I demonstrate a sense of flexibility in changing their definition. There wasn't like, a, you know, what is integrity? Like one word answer and then walk away. Um, so I really, I, I really, um, for me, that flexibility and that fluidity was some, one thing that I really sort of like appreciated coming from them because they didn't show sort of like a very fixed mindset mm. that I think a lot of people would expect when we were talking, talking about you know, the second half of the conversation. Yeah, for sure. And I think what that really shows is a sort of critical evaluation in the exactly, moment, exactly, which yeah. is kind of what we wanted to spur with mm-hmm. this episode, which I actually find personally gratifying. Yeah. And so I think it'll be interesting to see moving here on out how yeah. those responses change when we add the word academic yeah. to the term academic integrity. And also, I appreciate it. One of the responses from our interviews, whereby he straight up said that I don't know what does mm-hmm. uh, integrity, integrity mean. I kind of wonder if we sort of like flip the switch a bit and add like uh, another part to that question. Will he be so open about, you know, so, uh, speaking on camera about not not knowing the definition of like integrity. So we'll see how that that turns out in the second half of the podcast. And one thing that I just want to clarify moving forward is that the interesting thing about that is that we had to change the word integrity to use a synonym to honesty. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's, it's kind of interesting because most people don't really think of honesty when they think of integrity because integrity is usually used in the context of your work and Mm. passion the way that other people identified it to begin with. Yeah. But in actuality, oftentimes academic honesty and academic integrity are used synonymously or the reverse of academic integrity is rephrased as academic dishonesty Mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting to see how people approach that word because we use academic integrity as this abstract term on every syllabus yeah but we don't really frame it as honesty in that sense so without further ado here's what people had to say when we asked them what came to mind when we said the phrase academic integrity instead of just integrity on its own (sighs) Uh, can I Google? <laughs> um, Top of the head answer. doesn't have to be complex. I think it means um, being, <laughs> I would want to say, like, honest, truthful when it comes to, like, your academics. So, like, do not plagiarize people's, like, like, work, you know, just, like, being honest when it comes to, like, how you do your research or, um, like, no cheating during tests or exams. I think that's what it means for me in like the simplest possible way I could explain it, I okay. think. And how, if at all, do you apply that to your own life? Well, I always cite <laughs> um, other people's work and I do not cheat in um, my tests or exams. And what if I added the word academic to that? So what does academic integrity mean then? Ooh. <laughs> um, I think academic integrity is... I think it's often used in the space of UBC. Um, Oftentimes it's misinterpreted, but to me, I think academic integrity means that we are taking into consideration of the respects that have been laid out by previous academics before us, be it students or professors or staff members, and just acknowledging that I guess stealing that kind of information or using it without their consent might infringe upon the respect that they have laid out. I think that's what academic integrity would mean. And I don't want to keep you too much longer, but yeah. how, how do you apply that to your own life or do you ever see that playing out in your own life in any particular fashion? Um, I think with academic integrity, I see that applying to my life by 
just through my interactions with the students here at the CSIC, I think that a lot of the students, they come here not really sure what boundaries they can cross or they're kind of unsure of what kind of support can be there to alleviate any kind of concerns if they are unsure. And I think with that kind of uncertainty, we sometimes fear ourselves in actually asking people for help mm -hmm. and act actually acknowledging that we might not have all of the answers for that. And so I think with the support from like the Chapman Learning Commons as well as um, the CSIC, we try to make sure that we give that kind of support to the students so that they can also know that if they need that kind of support from student staff members or staff members themselves, then we are there to help them. So what if I add the word academic to that? What does academic integrity mean to you? Does it differ at all and how does it apply? I think when I, the first thing it's like, don't plagiarize. That's mm -hmm. what I think of. Yeah. But then if you think, like if you spend a minute to think about it, it's pretty much the same thing, like be mm -hmm. accountable. Mm -hmm. And then I also think being able to voice your ideas in a way that expresses what you want to say, mm -hmm. but also I think being mindful that someone else may have said it and citing them. So awesome. they're kind of the same thing. If I were to say academic honesty, what mm -hmm. does that mean to you? Well, uh, probably means not cheating and like do your stuff um, on your own mm -hmm. and to be honest to teachers, mm -hmm. not like basically not cheating. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that's important? Uh, cause our grades will mm, reflect our real, like our understanding on concept and mm -hmm. that is important to us and that's also important to teachers. Mm -hmm. Like uh, teachers should know how, how much students understand it. It's interesting cause for me, when I think about academic integrity, I think about what per people perceive or the, the institution of the university mm -hmm. perceives as academic integrity, which is like, don't cheat, mm -hmm. uh, do your own work, mm -hmm. don't plagiarize, all this stuff, which are like legitimate concerns, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But I think for me, um, I think the idea of academic integrity is also like, is also kind of wrapped up into the bureaucracy and the way the university kind of surveils and polices students yeah. and limits how we interact with each other and how we create. And so for me, like the, my, my instinct when I heard academic integrity, I'm like, okay, yeah, like bottom line, of course. But also like, why don't we like push that further to like academic integrity might mean for me like doing collaborative work and being more vulnerable in our work and doing work that matters. Uh, because for me, like inauthentic work is work that you don't care about. And so like, I guess academic integrity for me would be um, doing work that that you can speak to and that means something to you. So I think after reflecting and some of the things that our interviewees said, I think it's kind of obvious that when we mentioned academic integrity, a lot of our interviews just quickly jump to, oh, don't cheat, don't that, don't this. There's sort of like a, a rule that people are like reciting and it's almost like it's ro rolling off their th tongue. And I can totally see that like these people have been reading their, you know, their classes syllabus very thoroughly and they can definitely recite, you know, like the UBC uh, academic dishonesty policy, even if, it, when, if we ask them to do it. So that was, that was very interesting for me. Transitioning from the initial part of the interview where we were, what is integrity and people gave sort of like this very abstract and very uh, vague, but in a, in a positive way, I would say, and also a much more reflective answer. And then, and when we jump to like, you know, two seconds later, we say academic integrity, just adding that academic in, in the before the integrity, I think like people have their, their backs up and they get like tense and they're like shifting eyes like someone accusing me of doing something, you know, that 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 I wasn't realized I was not academically honest or something. Yeah. And I think what was interesting is you kind of hit the nail on the head is that a lot of people got really sort of tense and they looked almost scared and it's kind of weird because they had just been reflecting on the word integrity and then the moment you add the word academic it's like oh i gotta it's like, give it's like they were trying to find an answer in a textbook or something yeah, yeah it's like i have to give the answer that's on my syllabus right and you even had uh, that one interviewee briefly mentioned grades 
uh, when when we were following up on on wide act and 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 he corrected everything and and I'm not to say that grades aren't important and I, and not to disparage what he had to mm-hmm. say but it was interesting because that is kind of how it's given to people it's spoon fed as if if you plagiarize if you cheat your grade will go down and yeah. that's why you got to do it and that's what really motivated me to do this episode and ask people what they thought about the word integrity because so many people think of it as a system of incentives as a system of mm-hmm. bureaucracy yeah. and I'm gonna be honest even though some of the answers were kind of more along the lines of tentative bureaucracy. I was really encouraged by a couple of the answers because there were some people that clearly thought, I see what you're doing yeah. and <laughs> I haven't thought about this. And they were thinking about the moment. And that's what we really wanted to encourage people to do and try and see what the, how the responses differed. And even if they differ from, let's say, the textbook definition or even the more ethical definition of, you know, in a philosophical way, at least they were thinking about it. And I liked seeing that in the moment. Yeah. And I think going back to the person that you were talking about who mentioned the grades, following his mentioning of grades, he also said like his professors, like, you know, there's like, like he has to put on a guard or something. And that, he, you know, the reason his incentives is like not to be punished by his professors. And I think you can definitely see how sort of like this idea of academic integrity definitely impacts of like the relationship between the students and the professor because I think he would definitely he equated like the idea of academic integrity as being like fearful of like this figure of, of someone who's trying to chase him down who's trying to you know point out some flaws in his work or something and I think having that like having that incentive of being like having integrity as a result of like other people's actions or the presence of other people is definitely like an interesting thought for me and I think it was interesting how we approached with that one interviewee ways that we could better improve students' sense of integrity mm. by giving them a sense of fulfillment, by making them feel as if their work matters. Because I I don't know if this is the answer based off of science or what have you, but yeah. I do get the same feeling that she gets that the more you care about your work and the more you care about how it's presented and how it affects the world, mm-hmm. the more you're, let's say, cognizant of how your actions affect others, I think. Because you wouldn't want other people stealing your work. You wouldn't want other people doing this. Like it matters to you. So you have a little bit more insight. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's where she was going, but that's the vibe I was getting. And I tend to agree. I think that part of the problem is, is that we don't always give students a sense of pride in their work because we, we kind of give them set sort of questions and Mm -hmm. answer problems. Right. And maybe if we give students a better sense of ownership of what they do, they could maybe give you a bit more of a concrete answer. Yeah, but they, usually they, they could come to like a feeling of appreciation of mm-hmm. their, their work. I don't want to say whose fault is it, but I really want to pinpoint this whole idea of like taking ownership for students. And, you know, because I think it's definitely a good challenge to ask them to, you know, embrace their, their, their work, like, you know, take ownership, take pride, do this, do that. But are we asking too much from, us, uh, from fellow students for them to do that in between all of the obligations that they have to do? Or is there something like maybe, is there, is, is there something wrong with the way that the system is set up that makes students feel as if taking ownership and taking pride is just too much of a luxury that they have to, to take on? And it's just maybe... At the end of the day, just fo- focusing about the nuts and bolts of, you know, mm-hmm. a- academia and maybe just, you know, passing through getting that checklist as, you know, as easy as possible. Yeah, for sure. I think it is a kind of difficult to fit that in to all the other responsibilities, yeah. encourage students to take ownership and what have you. And I think it's easier said than done, which is why I think we have this sort of impersonal way of talking about integrity as we do now, where we just kind of have a definition on a syllabus, mm-hmm. which you get and you probably don't read. Which is why I think one thing that I would encourage, and I don't know how far we could push this, is that there are certain programs, uh, there's a big, a good number of them, but not all of them, which require students to take ethics classes, which I think is really interesting because you'll see them not just in things like philosophy where they mm. constantly talk about the ethics, but also do, in engineering. Do you get graded on that though? Do you get graded on ethics? I, I, what do you mean? <laughs> like, do you, uh, I don't know. So is that a class here at UBC? Or? I, I, I took an ethics class. You took class. an ethics yeah, class. Okay, yeah. so are you, do you, I'm presuming you get a grade at the end of it. Yeah. But you're graded on. You're basically like, graded on how, how, you how ethical you are. <laughs> no, you, you're graded on how clearly you've identified with the material. Right. So what they'll look at is basically, have you thought about it? And that's kind of easy to, maybe not easy yeah. to see, but it, it, it it's clearly, it, it's much clearer to see who's thought about it more and yeah. who hasn't based but, off of their answers but thinking about it doesn't mean implying it right yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah. i the way we did it in my class was we had the prof at the end of the for our final yeah what he did was he gave us a clipping of a newspaper article and he asked us to basically say what ethical framework 
do you think that this author is applying mm-hmm. within the context of what we were studying? Yeah. And what ethical framework would you apply and how would you change what the author said? Mm-hmm. I thought that was quite interesting. But do students walk out of that exam room and be like, yes, I'm going to be more ethical now? I think a lot of them did because yeah. we had some really interesting chats. I remember after one of our classes, we went back home to one of my friend's houses. Yeah. And the six of us, I'd only met, just met four of the people who came with us. Right. Had a chat until four in the morning. Wow. Yeah. About all of the different ethical frameworks we were talking about, hmm. which is interesting because why we liked that was because we were talking about things that really mattered to us, but we didn't critically evaluate often. Mm. And I think what's interesting is that you get a lot of ethics classes in things like law and engineering and medicine where your actions have practical implications on the lives of others. Yeah. And I don't know why we don't always apply that to other disciplines. I'm not saying that no other disciplines have ethics or talk about <laughs> ethics, right? Ethics is a, is a pinnacle question for almost every discipline. Yeah. But not all students are required to take an ethics class. And I don't know if they need to. You know, you could fit that in something else. Mm. And I'm not saying that students are unethical as they are now. But I think if we give students a chance, maybe accredited class, mm. to really grapple with why they should behave ethically or why, you know, maybe why they shouldn't or just to create critically evaluate ethics in general we can give them a chance to take ownership of of ethics as it were and be credited for their work yeah i guess for me i think when you were mentioning that like ethics class i kind of like assumed that that is going to be the solution to everything but i'm going to say right now that like i think that would be definitely a good stepping stone towards sort of like maybe getting students to think more about being ethical Mm -hmm. and having integrity so that i think that could be one approach maybe like a small scale solution for students to care more about academic integrity in a way that's more personal and valuable to them but Thinking more of this topic in a bigger scale, I gotta be honest, I think that when we, so when we first approached this project, when we, got, we decided we we're going to talk about academic integrity for the first few days, I was definitely thinking like, okay, academic integrity, don't cheat, don't plagiarize, like, why are you writing a 4,000 word document, Flynn? Like, it's, there, there's an answer to everything. Yeah, and, and I think that's how most people approach it. And I don't want to posit everything that, I, that I've that i been doing as if, like, I'm this, you know, um, whole yeah, howled sure. ethical person. I think, it, I think part of the reason why I'm so concerned with this question is because I come from an academic background in IR, which is so concerned with ethics all the time because mm-hmm. you're always talking about things like war. And so yeah, I kind of... History majors <laughs> don't know really much about ethics. <laughs> well, no, no, history majors, no, right? But, but, like, most, almost all of IR has to do with diplomacy, right? And mm. so we're constantly asking why questions, right? whenever I wrote a paper they would hammer into my brain why and so now whenever I approach my work or anything a new project no matter where it will be my first question is why and so I'm not going to say that I didn't think of it as as a system because there were parts of it where I was like okay cite my sources cite my sources and I knew that was right but I didn't really think about you know how how would I explain why this is important Mm -hmm. and so when I was looking at our page I was like okay well why yeah. And I and I really felt like it was missing from there. So if we come back to like our original question, academic integrity, what's it good for? Yeah, I think um, now that we are coming to the conclusion of this like project, I think it's it's definitely okay. First of all, I'm just gonna say it's definitely important to respect the work of other people and also respecting like the work that you have that you have produced. Like that's almost a like, basic um, idea for me. Like just like. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, like big respect. Adding further to that, I think also encourages people to produce the best work that they can. And that's also so pushing themselves and that's like self-serving. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think oh. that it's it's really important for, for people to experience academia at like the best that they can. Yeah, for sure. And for me, I think there's two levels. The first one is, as you say, respect. It's almost a matter of trust. Yeah. And you, you trust others and they trust you, right? A, a, a way of formalizing that, of, of, of reifying that. And the people that depend on your work are also trusting you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then I think the second side of it for me, I was looking for some sort of secondary and tertiary uh, ways that support that for yourself. And as you were kind of mentioning, citing your sources is actually a sign of showing that you've been thorough that you've done all the research, that you're uh, aware of, mm-hmm. of, of what your work is situated in. And it, it's, I think it's a sign almost of effort. It's almost a sign that you, you know, you, yeah. you've really taken your work seriously. Yeah. So I think that kind of brings us to the end and we can just reiterate the question, academic integrity, what's it good for? Well, 
clearly just from the differences between our answers, it could be good for different things for different people. Yeah. Just like just about every other question that we ask on this podcast. And that may sound a little bit fluffy, but that's that's the point. We want to get the conversation going. And I like that we got a variety of answers from different interviewees. And as a result, we'd really like to encourage all of our listeners to keep the conversation going by commenting on a blog, which we will link to the description of this podcast. Also, if you want to keep the conversation going in different ways, you can comment on our YouTube video or at our Twitter and Instagram handles at UBC Learn. And with that, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to this latest episode of Intuition. And we we'll hope that you'll join us again in our next episode, which is going to be our final episode for the summer. It's going to be a really special episode for the next one. So we really hope that you'll join us. And thank you so much. And we'll see you again. Yeah, thank you for your time. <laughs>